Hey guys, Ray here. So, I've got a more or less quick stream for today. And, uh, yeah, let me uh, get started explaining the things. So, dice. It's small, it's cute, it's very powerful. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's the little 3D printer that could. We're going to be printing very, very fast with this thing. Eventually. So. I think my last stream was on Friday or something, and then I decided to have a quieter weekend. I did some work on the weekend um, with the pillars. So, one sec. So with the pillars, there's a screw here, and then right next to it is a screw head, which is interfering. So what we've done, one of the things is, let's see, visibility, visibility. I think you can see it. We've put a bit of a chamfer on the one respective corner of the pillar. And this is so that the screw head does not push up on it. This is so that we clear the screw head. And I can put it in about that much. I can turn the screw head. And I think I'm going to end up coming back and doing that with Loctite after this is secured. You have to come in, and all I can really do is just turn the head, the screw with my little bit here because I don't have the ability to find an Allen key. Actually, I do. Here, I have an Allen key. So I'll turn it. What you need. I'm not tightening it right now because. There's plenty of other holes that are going to go to the plates. We're not there yet. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to get locked tight after it's secured. This one's slightly tighter, but yeah. There's a very specific way to do these pillars orientations, and these holes on the sides have to line up, kind of be like horizontal to each other. So if you turn it 90 degrees, you can end up with something that looks very, very close when your holes are, you know, a few millimeters apart. That would be uh, not fun. You need it this way. I say consult the CAD model, or we'll get some good instructions written up eventually, sooner rather than later, I suppose. And uh, yeah. But yes, four pillars, presently only secured from the actual top sheet. Right now, this is actually going to be, like, this top plane is going to be the bottom of the machine. And the thing in the very bottom of this view is the very top of the machine. So yeah, lots of fun. These are actually Torx screws. Torx? Torx? So, I can't tighten them very much with a normal Allen key. I have Torx bits, but I have to get through a very small hole here. So... I'm going to need to find a proper way to do that. And one of the ways to do that is to put these plates on the side eventually, secure these beams in place, then come back, lock tight that screw into place, and uh, yeah, still needs a way to tighten it, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so with the belts. We have this piece here, this is a printed part. There are four openings, one, two, three, four, the part is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which side exactly we end up putting it in, it uh, sits in here. It's, it, it's friction on the cart. What we do is, first of all, we have to move the motors to the outward position so that we can get slack in them. And I'm going to prop my dicey up this way so that I can access. Okay. See, this is safer than propping it up on the head area. And 
and I'm just going very, very sideways with my screws and my screwing bit. And then I'll pull it up a little more. I'm coming from here. This is normal, actually. Maybe I can use just the normal hex bit. Hang on. Okay, so I'm one size too big. I can get a different hex bit eventually. Right now, I'm using probably what is a Torx bit on a normal hex bolt, which is not Torx. And I'm loosening the motors. And I'm doing this so that I can now see it slide and slide. And now I'm going to come in and from one, maybe two sides, I'm just going to tighten. Yeah, I'm just tightening on the top right now, or the top in its present view. And all we're doing here is just keeping the motors out because we're going to glue the belts into place. Yeah, we're going to glue the belts into place. There's no room here for, you know, crimp connectors or, or not crimp connectors. I've been thinking electronics too much. There's no room in here for, like, you know, clamps or anything like that. No. We're going to glue the belts into place. This is going to be the relatively quicker half of it. Let me show you. See, we have lots of slack here. What we're going to do is we're going to remove our ties. We're going to find the appropriate cutting tool. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do right now, all we're going to do is uh, one section. So if we look, there we go. I've, I've put the belts in here. And the idea is going to be that we're going to glue this in. This is the loose set. Then we're going to tighten up on the other side. See, I have, because I didn't actually cut them in half evenly, but yeah. But I have enough. Because the cart is here, and the belt is going to enter the cart about 10 millimeters. So what we're going to do is once that's tight, and I can start applying pulling pressure from here, I'm going to line this up. I'm going to give it about 10 millimeters. I'm going to cut the belt here. And then I'm going to glue that into place. And I'm going to ensure that this is able to remain there by putting a clamp on the belt here. So the belt is going to be held like so. And then it's going to be available here. And we're going to glue it. Yep. So pretend that this is glued. So that's not going anywhere. I'm pulling here. It's tight. We have the ability to put that in. So right now, we're not cutting anything. We're just putting some belts aside, you know, for a rainy day. But it's raining here, so I guess we can do that now. Cool. And all the belts face one way, which, uh, I don't know, slightly intimidating. But yeah, whatever. I have the cheapest super glue I've ever seen. This is a wonderful choice for, uh, you know, printed parts and all that other fun stuff. This is from when I was filing over the weekend, so we pretty much just kind of went and did, you know, maybe 30 passes or so, and we got all the nice aluminum shavings to get that one corner of the pillar ready. Now, for the fun stuff. Let's prepare. This does not even have to be on here right now. We could just, you know, move the cart out of the way. And we could just have this here. Keep everything loose and we could do that. And I think I'll do that because I like having the ability to work like this. There we go. Or at least somewhat. That's more like it. Oh, another note is clearing out these holes. 
And this is a printed part. Sometimes, when, so when you're printing it like this, and you know it's doing layer by layer, sometimes that first top layer doesn't print perfectly, you know, horizontal, and there's like little droopings on the inside or just other printing artifacts. So you got to get in there with like a two millimeter drill bit or other intricate scraping tool and clear it out. And we're going to know that it's clear because I'm going to put the belt in. You got to get it all the way in. And remember, this is super glue. This is uh, quick stuff. So we're going to put it in. We're going to make sure it slides cleanly into place. And yes, that is our goal. So now, let us do that. I will begin opening the super glue. Or, yes, it is. It does say super glue for plastics, metal, rubber, leather, glass, and ceramic. Cyanoacrylate adhesive. Yeah. The same stuff that's in, that's a primary ingredient in Loctite. Yeah. We're being fancy and we're actually using blue thread locker from Loctite in this build, but you know, it's always just put super glue on your screws. That's a great life mentality. But sometimes we do the necessary way. I'm not sure why I was trying to poke through the open nozzle, whereas in fact we should be poking through here. And why I'm using a dull piece of plastic when I can be using a much nicer knife. Or a slightly less dull knife. Nah, I'm kidding. I like this blade. It does the job. There we go. We have an opening. I'll be scraping that later. We have nozzle. Okay. We're going to be putting a glob of super glue, which is why the paper towels are a nice touch here, and it's definitely going to soak through them. But we're going to be doing this for about 8 millimeters. So, 8 millimeters uh, from the edge of the belt. Uh, we have a nice square end, thanks to my beautiful, beautiful cutting abilities. I'm specifying 8 millimeters from zero on the caliper, just to get an idea of what that is. So, to the best of my recollection, the belt goes 10 millimeters into the cavity of the printed part. But we're going to be putting it, that's what, one, two, three, four, that's five belt teeth. We're going to put, um, so yes, I'm going to try to keep my head out of the thing, but no promises. And we're going to put nice globs of super glue on both sides of the belt. About eight millimeters in. So one, two, three. Okay. The vertical entry would have been a better idea here. All right, that's some on the skin. Perfect. More on the teeth. And in we go. And that's not all the way in, but now it is. Okay. That one hole is the hardest push I have to do out of all four of these. It was not clearing out that nicely. And now we're going to do the second one again. Eight millimeters is four, maybe five teeth. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, nice glob. Turning slightly. Whoop, that dropped. There we go. That dropped. More on this side. Alrighty then. And entering. It's all dropping. Okay. That's as much as I can get in there. And that's how it's going to sit. 
roughly speaking. Cool. So who's watching? Pop in chat, say hello. So if the well the packaging doesn't actually say anything about how long the super glue is going to take to dry, but about uh, five minutes for it to initially set, perhaps. The other thing is, this stuff likes to dry up and then become a complete waste. So I uh, put it into a small zipper bag and squeeze the air out so that, you know, that doesn't happen. And we no longer have any Schlitzmutten. Schlitzmutten available. So I will put this into the Schlitzmutten bag and squeeze the air out. Schlitzmutten. 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 Mutten. I, I had a call with uh, Rene, the creator of DICE this weekend, and uh, he explained to me the whole gluing the belts in process, and then we spent some time practicing my German. And now, I can say words. So, this is like a, uh, a button head screw, but in German they call it a cheese head screw, and it's Linsenkopfschraube. Linsenkopfschraube. So, this is cool. And then, this is also that. And then this is a, um, like a flat head, but they call it a sink head screw for, you know, the countersunk head. And it's Senkkopfschraube. Senkkopfschraube. Yeah. And then there is a, this is what uh, in America is a normal socket screw, and uh, with them it's cylinder head screw, so cylinder cough. Cylinder head. And then there is washer, which is like flat something washer. Yeah, it's flat washer, so Unterlegscheibe. Unterlegscheibe. And this is fun. So yes, I, uh, on my resume, I can now list English, native, Russian, fluent, Spanish, moderate working proficiency, German, technical fastener naming. I'm fluent in that now. It's wonderful. There is one more that uh, we did not practice. Oh, well, Schlitzmutten, we've been practicing Schlitzmutten, but the thing is, Rolling the R's. See, Russian, Spanish, it's rrr, right? It's rolling the R's. That's how I've been doing it my whole life. But in R German, they don't roll the R's. So I don't know how to do that except for just to kind of like underemphasize it. So it's Schlitz Muttern, Muttern, but Muttern, Schlitz Muttern. I'm just Schlitz Muttern. I'm just kind of working on that. Cool. This is a Mutter. It's a Mutter. It's a regular nut. And then there is this, it's a hex standoff, and we didn't talk about this one. But let's see if I can do this. A Americanized pronunciation, first time ever. Ab stands Bolson. Ab stands Bolson. Bolson. I don't know if the S is part of the stand or the bolson. And it's not Z, Z, it's Z like TS. T S. So Abstands Bolson. Abstand Abstands Bolson. Bolson. And it kind of makes sense, right? It's a stand off. It's an abstand off. Abstands Bolson. And the Z is like the tss, T-S, like in fits, T-S. So nice stuff. As I said, I am now proficient in German technical fastener naming. It's a very important skill to have. This is setting nicely. I might put a little more on the perimeter when we're done. I can, I can see the extra on the belt where we did that. While this is setting, I want to talk about a few other things. In an earlier stream, we, tr uh, we tried to set up the print bed by putting a blue Loctite onto the underside of the Zylinderkopf, the uh, 
normal socket head or cylinder head for those that want a verbatim pronunciation. Screw, yes, screw, very important part. Cylinder, cylinder cough. So we put Loctite on here and either it wasn't enough or the force of my grip is too strong, who knows, but these screws are really not staying in. And I talked to Renee about it and he says it's okay, it was a thing, but now it doesn't matter and uh, we'll work on it. So that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. The next step of the instructions is actually gluing the belts in. Uh, this is just an impromptu stream. It's not like I've prepared for this at all or anything. Uh, but, you know, this involves a clamp, and I haven't found a good clamp that I want to use yet. So maybe I'll, I'll dig up a nice one tomorrow, because what we're going to be doing is... Uh, we have to have this side of the belt, right? This side of the belt is glued now, and it's going to set overnight. It takes five minutes to harden, but I'm going to give it a day. Right, for both of these to harden up. And then here, we are going to put, the, we're going to tighten this belt and we're going to put a clamp at the end here so it can't move back. And then with the belt under tension, we're going to glue it in to this side of the printed part. And for that, we're going to need a nice clamp. So who else is watching? Please say hello in chat. It's... Meanwhile, I'm going to pull up the Instructable and see what the next step is. But yeah, the next step is to finish gluing the belts in place. Then after that is what we ended up doing impromptu over uh, the next few streams, which was mounting the four vertical pillars. Um, I guess I'm going to start kind of preparing stuff on the side. So uh, we can mount the Z-sheet now. I'm going to load up that YouTube video. And obviously it's going to require captioning. Not in German, because my German is not good enough. Other than knowing uh, the five fastener names, my German is not yet sufficient to understand full spoken things. So, in a moment, when I compose my thoughts, we're going to be assembling the, uh, it would be the vertical sheet. There, I'll, uh, M310 countersunk. One moment. Let's move in super glue. M310 countersunk, sink head. Flathead, Torex, Senkkopfschraube, Senkkopfschraube, M3 by 10, I have that here, We're going to be using the last of our four rails. This is 140 millimeters, I'm told. And a plate. I'm getting a plate right now. This is the Z-sheet plate. We'll work on it. We'll work on understanding unanimously what it all means. Yeah, we can degrease it in here. Degrease. That's not the right word. 
It is. We're taking Greece off the rail, but not, not in the usual sense of the matter. I'll just set this aside. Cool. This is the Z plate. Later, we're going to be adding this onto here, inside here. This is it. Yeah. So, let's take a look. This sheet has countersinks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight countersinks. And there are apparently M3 threads cut into these two holes here. We have two arches here. I'm happy with it. In the Instructable videos, the prototype is slightly different. It has an additional cutout here being shown, but that's the very first dice that ever existed in this world. And this is slightly newer. Yes. So, yes. One. Okay. We're going to start with uh, preparing the rail. I'll get gloves. I will cut the opening thing on the jig. One out. I will cut the second bag. Misumi is nice. I don't know why, but they double bag these. Very cool. And these bags are stiff. This is this is uh, like a heavier, thicker plastic than one might expect. When that doesn't work is when we. Uh, break out the cutters, because, come on, who has scissors? Okay. There we go. And we're going to slide the rail to the side to free up that little rubber band on each side. We don't want to actually take the, rail, uh, the cart off, because then you'll lose the balls that this all sits on. We just want to take the rubber bands off. And then we'll use a uh, paper towel to clear off some grease. I don't think I actually want to scrape the rail, because you want to keep the rail greased. But there's grease inside these openings that I'm going to remove with a screwdriver bit in a moment. That's really it. So a moment here. The grease is now moderately removed, ever so slightly. I will put my fingers on the ends here and I will move the cart back and forth and I'm happy with its movement. I will resume the video. I will move my plate out of the way here. Now, apparently, we're going to be putting the rail in here. And apparently, it has to fit. It is not yet fitting. I anticipate there might be filing. One moment. You even have to have a little bit of give, like up and down, up and down. Yep, grab yourself a file, and uh, we're going to start polishing some things. First, let's see if I can demonstrate this. When the laser cutter of the metal moves, it is trying to do a right, um, a right angle, a corner, but it ends up rounding it to some extent. So the first thing we're going to do is file the very corner.
Not much, but some. And then we'll just do it on the other side as well. Check with hopefully less than any metal dust on our hands. In other words, no metal dust on our hands. Still tight, and we want some give. We're not forcing anything, so let's go file more. I'm gonna work off of the bottom here. And we try to put it again. I feel like we're getting closer. So now we'll go on the other side. Try to clean that edge up. Good idea to use a file of the, uh, oh, that's perfect, of the full width. That way we get the same amount of grinding on each stroke for the entire width. And I'll find some reason in about 10 minutes why that wasn't working and I went back to this file. And again we go. Oh, there is now metal shavings on this. Perfect. It's a perfect place to, yeah, we'll keep the metal shavings on this one, but we'll be placing the, uh, yeah. you, don't, you don't want the dust on the rail. We'll be placing the rail on here. It's getting in there. It needs more though. And so we shall continue. Practical Printing says, put a little chalk on the file and it will help it cut the stainless better. Hey Chris, this is just aluminum, 4 millimeters. There's always canola oil. Always canola oil. See that I filed an arc. I just want to focus for a moment on the corners. And we continue. Or we do. Chris 
Chris says, did you hear about the guy who invented lifesavers? They say he made a mint. He sure did. In more ways than one, for sure. And obviously when I repeat a joke, it comes out completely butchered. Yeah, tough crowd tonight. Oh yeah. For sure. I mean, I, I was going to have a quiet, uh, uh, a very quick stream. I was going to glue my belts in. I was going to talk for a few minutes about how I didn't have the clamp prepared to do the second half of the gluing procedure, and then I was going to call it a night. And I said, eh, this took too little time. So let's, uh, let's see what the next step is. See if we can introduce it. And here we are 20 additional minutes later filing the uh, channel for the rail to sit, to sit in. In other words, exactly as expected. Why do chicken coops only have two doors? Because if they had four, there would be chicken sedans. Eh, fair enough. Sedan's a better choice in my opinion, though. If you're getting a coupe, you may as well get the full-on sports edition, you know? Try this again. Uh, come on, you can do this. Okay, it's somewhat going in now. Time to do the other side. Hold it from the side of this time. This is pretty much the name of the game. Adjust. Check, fail, repeat, adjust more. very delicate art to close inspection without having the entire top of my head over you in the camera view. There's an art to this. I just haven't mastered it yet. Or close. my uh, filing prowess is 100% majestical and everyone is just completely dumbfounded by how amazing it is that they, they don't have the ability to speak words at this time. It's, uh, it's okay, I understand. Uh, we'll start with it. Alright, let's try this again. Okay, that's sitting-ish, still tight though. I think uh, I may have been filing at an angle. Now I'm gonna go in and fix that up. With the other angle.
take a little bit from the rear on here as well. Uh, we're going to be degreasing this again pretty soon. All right. Well, The idea here is if I lift this sheet, that the uh, rail just falls completely out, and that is not the case. We're definitely, okay, so, oh, okay, let's not drop anything. We're definitely long enough, there's about a one millimeter gap, you can, if I angle it just so you can see the gap of light right here. So, we're long enough, we're not wide enough. Got it, I think. I'm going to try to do a uniform number of passes on each side. Now would involve counting how many passes on each side I'm doing, which I've already not done. That's roughly 10. We'll take 10 off of here. And we'll take 10 off of here. Head over here. Uh, Chris, no, uh, if a Dremel comes anywhere near it, it will be murdered by the fullest extent, not permitted by law. No Dremel. No. No, 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 no. Too delicate. Too delicate. is if I do that. It's catching a little bit, so we're going to do a little more here. Again. And lift. And that was a clean through. Very nice. Do we have any side to side? We have practically no side to side. A little bit of rocking, but that's okay because we're going to install a back plate. Cool. So, next, next, next. Okay. So, the next step involves one moment. So now that we've verified that the plate is properly sized to accept the rail, the next step involves putting the plate in here. Since the belts are not done yet, I don't think I'm going to be doing that at this moment. So it's going to be putting the plate in here, although we could do it. But yeah. So yeah, I can talk about this for a moment. So, this is the plate that goes here on the inside of the pillars. This is the backing plate for the Z. As you can see, it lines up and it, ex it has holes on the outside, the four holes, that are going to have a screw go through them and go into the four threaded holes that are going to receive that. Uh, th this is probably going to go on the bottom of this assembly here. And then similarly, it's going to have screws that come in through here and then we're going to have our slotted nuts, our Schlitzmutten. Good. 
be inside the rails here, and that's how we're going to hold everything together. Yep. This is going to need a little bit of touching up, I can imagine. But it does go through, so as long as we keep it there, that'll be fine. Presumably. Presumably. Cool. I think that's really all I have for you today. I want to actually mentally and physically prepare for the gluing of the belts. And that's probably going to be a uh, next time, presumably tomorrow, sort of thing. But, you know, super glue does dry in five minutes, so I'm not going to pull too hard, but that should be in there for good. Cool. Alright guys, I'll, uh, I'll leave this open in case anyone has any uh, thoughts to put into chat, and then we'll, uh, we'll call this stream for today, and pick up hopefully tomorrow. Oh, and then I get to go try to scrape all the super glue off my fingers. It's always fun. I wonder if acetone reacts to skin, or rather whether skin will react to acetone. Because acetone's good for this stuff, right? There's only a decent chance I'll do that. No worries. Well, alrighty then. Have a good one, everyone, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick it up uh, next time. Yes, Chris, nail polish remover, acetone, indeed. Only a mildly bad reaction. Alright guys, have a good one. Later.